Hi everyone, Elliot Jacobson here for Disaster Diaries, and I want to do a little computation, a little math and physics with you today. I saw this sort of um, meme, this idea going around uh, actually for a number of years uh, now, which is, well, let me just bring up the uh, slide and you'll see what the idea is I'm talking about. This idea of how fast is the Earth heating up? What is the rate of heating of the planet? And this meme is that it's been measured in terms of the equivalent of Hiroshima bombs. I'm going to give you a couple of examples um, here in, in a second, but what I want to do is just begin with a little bit of um, history, or I'm sorry, of the science of this. So the reason the planet is heating up is that more energy from the sun is coming in than is radiating back out into space. So energy comes in as solar radiation. This is sort of short wave, high energy radiation. It heats up the planet and the planet emits long wave infrared hot uh, energy back out into space. So if everything works out just right, the amount coming in and the amount going out are the same, and the planet doesn't warm or cool. But we have what's called an Earth energy imbalance, essentially the greenhouse gases trapping some of this uh, outgoing heat and not letting it escape. Uh, these waves are bouncing into the molecules and not necessarily getting out into outer space. We have more heat sort of um, coming in than going out. planet heats up. All right, so what is a way we measure this? I said that it was in terms of Hiroshima bombs. So this headline is from 2013, and it says that roughly the rate at which more heat is coming in than is escaping into space is about the same as if we exploded four Hiroshima bombs every second of every day, of every day of the year, and on and on and on. So this number was four, right, in 2013. And they, somebody else came up with this number again. This is 2013, that in a day, it comes out to be about 400,000 Hiroshima bombs worth of heating. And that sounds like a lot of Hiroshima bombs every day. Um, it's always important to keep in mind that a lot of that heating is going into the ocean, over 90% of it. Um, we also have some of that heating being used to melt ice, and you don't really notice anything with the latent heat of, of uh, melting um, there, sort of absorbing a lot of that energy. Then we have some of that heat is, is heating up land. Land itself is getting hotter, and then of course some of that heat is going into the atmosphere. So there's Seems like a lot, but when you actually spread it out over the whole planet and all the different ways um, it gets absorbed, then, well, it's not that fast. I mean, it's fast in terms of a human lifetime. Um, it feels like it's slow, right? Here's another one. Earth is heating at a rate equivalent to five atomic bombs per second. This is from 2020. All right, so it went from four to five. Uh, then if we look at the oceans, here's something from 2019 that's saying the oceans are heating at the equivalent of one atomic bomb every second. Um, but if we go forward just another um, couple of years, this is from 2022, the oceans are absorbing heat at the uh, equivalent of seven Hiroshima's every second. Well, if the oceans are getting seven a second, then Clearly, the world has to be getting more than seven a second, right? So all of these things just seem to contradict each other, and there's no firm science. And so I decided to do the calculation myself. Um, I've actually double-checked this calculation with a couple of atmospheric scientists, and they all agree this is, this is the calculation. This is how you do it, and this is the number you get. So what I want to do, I hope you will stick with me through this video, is I'm going to actually show you how to do this calculation. And I don't think it's that hard to understand. Look, we're talking about the Earth energy imbalance. That's what that picture was about, the difference between incoming solar and outgoing thermal. And it's a measure at which the planet is heating. So just to, to understand how key this particular number is, here is a journal article, an imperative to monitor the Earth energy imbalance. And this opening paragraph from the abstract says, the absolute value of the Earth energy imbalance represents the most fundamental metric defining the status of global climate change. 
It's not how much CO2 is in the atmosphere or methane. It's not um, what the current temperature of the planet is compared to some previous baseline. The fundamental metric to measure climate change is the Earth energy imbalance, because that's telling us how much more is coming in than is going out. And it's sort of like how fast the faucet or the hose is turned on, right? That, that tells us how fast the planet is heating up in very real terms. Um, again, just if you wanted to stop and, and look at this for a second, it kind of explains the Earth energy imbalance to you, the difference between incoming solar and outgoing infrared. So NASA has been keeping track of the Earth energy imbalance for a long time. Here's the last 22 years of it. And you notice on the left-hand scale, it is measured in terms of watts per square meter. Now, if you think of a 100-watt light bulb, and how much that would illuminate. You can think of it illuminating a certain space. Well, we're talking about having one watt every square meter. A meter is a little bit over three feet. So think of one very tiny light bulb, uh, one watt light bulb every cubic yard, if you like the Western measurements. Not quite uh, completely accurate, but close enough. And we can see that um, there's some fairly well-established calculations that have been taking place for quite a while. Uh, thank you, Leon Simmons, for creating this graph and sharing it on Twitter. I have the link below. You can see that if you want to um, look at the tweet where this was originally posted. At any rate, where we are right now today is at 1.64 watts per square meter. That is the Earth, the latest value from NASA, the Earth energy imbalance, 1.64 watts per square meter. And I want to take that number and convert it into Hiroshima bombs. Now, we can see in the path, past, even in the recent past, that this number was much lower at times. So one could imagine that the number of Hiroshima bombs today was much less just a couple years back, right? This number is going up so quickly to such a, an extent up here. Higher peak than ever before as far as these numbers have been recorded. Okay, so let's do the calculation, and this is where we're going to get a little bit technical. So the most recent number from March 2021 to February 2022 was a record high 1.64 watts per square meter. So I'm going to show you how to convert that to Hiroshima. So step one, the surface area of the Earth, and we want that in terms of square meters. Now you can just go on to Google and look this up, but let me just show you how to do it. So first of all, the Earth is roughly a sphere, so we're just going to use a sphere as the default for it. Um, we're going to ignore mountains and other terrain that might actually add a few square meters to the planet. And we're just going to assume a ball, and the ball has radius. 6,371,000, take a, a little bit, kilometers. That's the distance from the surface to the center of the planet. Uh, I said kilometers, I meant meters. So the equation for the surface area of a sphere is area is 4 pi r squared. So you have a sphere, that's the surface area of that. So all we need to do is to plug in this 6371 into that, and we get a surface area of the planet of... 510 followed by 12 zeros. So if you um, want a reminder, that's trillion. So we have 510 trillion square meters is the surface area of the planet. So, you know, think about here's a, here's a square meter, right? It's like how far you can hold out your arms. So the planet itself it consists of 510 trillion of those. So um, that's step one. So keep that number in mind. Step two is going to be the total Earth energy imbalance for the planet. So we're going to start with this uh, EEI of 1.64 watts per square meter. And remember that the planet is 510 trillion uh, square meters. So if I simply multiply those, then the total EEI on the whole Earth is going to be this 1.64 watts per square meter times how many square meters? 510 trillion. So we get 836,500,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,000,
one watt is one joule a second. Now the question is, what the heck is a joule? So what I want to do is to show you what a joule is. I, I looked this up on the internet before making this video, and the guy had a 100 um, uh, gram mass, and he lifted it through a meter. Um, I'm going to make it easier. This can of cat food right here is 5.5 ounces. So um, one joule, all right, a joule is an amount of energy, is roughly the amount of energy it takes to lift this can of cat food two feet. So if you like, it's the amount of energy it takes to lift it from just below the screen to just above the screen. So that, my friend, is one joule of energy. Lifting that can of cat food through two feet that is one joule. Now, if I do that in a second, that turns out to be one watt. One watt is one joule of energy expanded over a period of a second. All right, well, the problem is that we're talking about trillions of joules of energy here, or trillions of watts. So uh, we have a name for that. A trillion joules is called a terajoule. Now, what we already computed was that the Earth energy imbalance was 836 trillion 500 billion watts. And so that comes out to be then just 836 trillion 500 billion joules per second. And now we can convert from joules per second to terajoules per second. Very simply, terajoules per second, the Earth energy imbalance is just dividing by a trillion, right? 836.5 terajoules per second. So that is sort of the baseline. All right, so that is how much energy is coming in. Just picture 836 trillion 500 uh, billion cans of cat food being lifted two feet roughly every second. That's how much energy is coming in. All right, let's go on now to the next step, which is to see how many terajoules there are in a Hiroshima bomb. So Hiroshima was designed to be a 15 kiloton nuclear explosion. Um, what it actually turned out to be was a little bit more, a little bit less. They weren't exactly sure, but you can measure that in terms of terajoules. It came out to um, somewhere between 50 and 75 terajoules is what they estimated. They weren't that sure. So what I did was to say, okay, let's not think about what actually happened, but let's get a, a firm unit of measurement called a Hiroshima bomb, which is a 15 kiloton of TNT explosion. And you can go right on to Google and have it convert 15 kilotons um, into terajoules. And there's a little converter. You can look this up online. There's lots of these around. It turned out to be about 62.76 terajoules of energy in the Hiroshima bomb. So what is that, where does that put us then? Well, Look, we have Hiroshima being 62.76 terajoules, um, and the Earth energy imbalance was 836.5 terajoules per second. So we know how many terajoules in one of these bombs, and we know how much was used every second in terajoules. So we, it's very simple to just divide, and that gives you the answer. The Earth energy imbalance is currently, at this moment, 13.33 Hiroshima bombs per second. Now it changes a little bit more, a little bit less, and you saw how that graph went up and down a little bit. But right now, at this moment, that is the rate. It's not four, it's not five, right? It's none of these other numbers, it is 13.3. So if we actually see how many in a day that is, it turns out, it, all you have to do is multiply by 86,400, that's the number of seconds in a day, and the Earth energy imbalance is 13.33 Hiroshima bombs per second. So we multiply those two together. And if we sort of round down, because we're not, we don't have that precise accuracy, this computation comes out to be about 1,150,000 Hiroshima bombs per day. All right, that is how many. Remember that one um, headline where it said 400,000? No, the num actual number is over 1.1 million Hiroshima bombs per day. 
So what about how much is going into the ocean? So we saw that one headline that said one Hiroshima bomb per second in the ocean. Another headline from just three years later said seven Hiroshima bombs per second. Well, that slide I showed you, that graphic actually showed 93% of all energy going into the ocean from um, the incoming solar radiation. Well, I'm going to take the low ball estimate of that and just assume the oceans absorb about 90% of the excess heat. And you will find some people quoting that as the number as well. All right, so 90% of those 13.33 bombs, that's 12 Hiroshima bombs per second going into the ocean. So next time one of these headlines come around, comes around and you see them measuring our current status of uh, planetary heating in terms of Hiroshima bombs, know that at least today the correct numbers are 13.33 Hiroshima bombs per second, 12 per second into the oceans is the heat absorption equivalent, and planetary wide for a day it is a little bit over 1.1 million. So not everybody likes the Hiroshima equivalent, so I have three other equivalences I want to give you. The current Earth energy equivalent is about the same as if we had 697 billion, billion microwave ovens running on high. So your little home microwave on high is 1,200 watts, and those um, microwaves will be running 24 hours a day, heating up your chili or, or whatever they're doing. But we're, that roughly corresponds to 88 microwaves for every person on the planet running full-time 24-7 on high. Another way to think about it is in terms of Hurricane Katrina. You can actually look up the power of Hurricane Katrina at landfall, and it was about 120 um, terajoules. So again, if you, if you go back and do the, look at the previous numbers, you can see that if we get 120 terajoules from Katrina, then we get about seven Katrinas at landfall. If you think about the total energy of seven simultaneous uh, Katrinas happening, that's how much energy we're getting uh, pumped into the planet every single second. And finally, it's about the same as if every person on the planet um, had the good old-fashioned 100-watt incandescent light bulbs. Remember how hot those got? So it's about the same as having a fa every person on the planet burn 1,045 of these 100-watt light bulbs full-time, 24 hours a day. You know, next time somebody tells you to go turn off the lights, um, try and find 1,045 light bulbs to turn off. Uh, I doubt you're going to have that easy of a time doing it. Well, that's it. Uh, this has been a pretty sad presentation. I know I, I sort of get over and past the point of the how horrific Hiroshima was by using it as a benchmark like this. I'm sorry for the survivors of Hiroshima, um, but I think it really drives home just what the true state of the emergency is that we're in right now. All right, everyone, this is Elliot Jacobson. See you later.